Hi everyone, it's Elliot from TutorialEdge.net and in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you exactly how you can secure your Go REST APIs using JSON Web Tokens or JWTs. So JWTs or JSON Web Tokens as they are more formally known are a compact URL safe means of representing claims to be transferred between two parties. So what this essentially means is JWTs allow you to transmit information from a client to a server in a stateless but secure way. Now the standard either uses a secret using the HMAC algorithm or a public private key pair using the RSA or ECDSA encryption algorithms. And if you're interested in the formal definition of what JWTs are, then I highly recommend checking out the RFC, which I'll be leaving a link to in the description below. So why do we use JWTs? Well, JWTs are heavily used within single page applications or SPAs as a means of secure communication as they allow us to do two th key things. The first of which is authorization. Now, this is the most commonly used practice for JWTs. Once a user logs into your application using something like OAuth or just basic auth or authenticates in some manner, Every request that is then sent from that client on behalf of the user will contain a JWT either within a cookie or within a header of that request. Now the second key thing JWTs allow us to do is information exchange. So these JWTs can be signed using public private key pairs or private passwords and we can then verify each system in this transaction in a secure manner. And JWTs contain an anti-tamper mechanism as they are signed based off the header and the payload. So let's dive into our Visual Studio Code Editor and we're going to be creating a simple client and a simple server. Now the client is going to attempt to call one of the endpoints on our server that is going to be protected by JWT middleware. Now this middleware will essentially take in the token or the JWT token from our header of the request and then check to see if that is a valid token based off our secret password, which both the client and the server are going to have knowledge of. So let's get started by defining a really simple client. So first of all, make their client and cd into client and we're going to call go mod init github.com slash Elliot Forbes slash go JWT tutorial slash client. Now also within this we're going to want to create a new file and we're going to call this main.go. Now within this we'll do the following. So package main, punk main and fmt.println by simple client. Perfect. Now just to validate that we're not crazy and it all works, go run main.go. Excellent. So we've got the basics or the starting point for our client. Now, I guess the first challenge that we're going to want to overcome is generating tokens. So how do we go about doing that? Well, we're going to have to import the JWT package. So JWT github.com slash DGRI Java JWT go. And we're also going to want to do the following. So func and we'll say generate JWT, which will return a string or an error. Within this, we're going to want to create a new token with JWT.new. And the signing method we're going to want to use for this token is JWT.signing, signing method HS256. Below this, we're going to want to create some claims on this token. So token.claims. And this will be a JWT.map claims type. And just below this, we're going to want to do claims authorized equals true. Uh, we'll say claims uh, user equals Elliot Forbes. And we'll say the claims expiry as equal to time.now dot add and we'll say 30 minutes and we'll cast this to Unix time. 
Next, we're going to want to do the token string. So token string or error equals token dot signed string, and we're going to pass in my signed or signing key. I should say if there's been an error here. So if error does not equal nil, then we're going to want to put that out. So error if something went wrong and error dot error. And below this, again, we're just going to want to return an empty string and our error. And finally, if everything went to plan, we want to return our token string. So return token string and nil. Now, one final thing we want to do is define our my signing key. And this is going to equal a byte array. And within this, we're going to say something like my super secret phrase. Perfect. And so let's test this out. So token string or error equals generate JWT and fmt.printline token string. And we'll also have to handle the error. Error generating token string. Cool. So let's test this out and validate that we're not crazy. So go run main.go. And as you can see here, we've managed to successfully create a new signed JWT token or JW JSON web token. Now, just quickly, I want to comment on how we've passed in the signing key here. So just to explicitly show you how this works, I've declared this within my code, but the best practice is to actually pick this up from your environment variables. So within your environment, you would do something like set my JWT token equals super secret phrase. And then you would do something like um, os.get, uh, let's comment this out, bar my signing key equals os.get and my JWT token, which is the same key that we've used down here. And this will automatically pick up whatever our super secret phrase is. Now, this is a really good practice for any passwords within your system or within your Go programs, as it helps to prevent you from accidentally committing them into public repositories. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is to convert this into a really simple REST API. Now, the first thing I'm going to want to do is define a home page function. This is going to take in HTTP response writer or R, which is a pointer to a HTTP dot request. Now within this, I'm going to want to generate a valid token or error using our generate JWT function that we've just defined. I'm going to want to check to see if there was any errors. And if there is, if print f error uh, w and error dot error, like so. Otherwise, I'm going to want to simply fmt f print f and our valid token. So all this will do is whenever it receives a request, it will generate a new JSON web token and it will hopefully print it back out to our response. Now, just above our function main, we're going to want to create a handle requests function. Now this will do the mapping between our routes and our functions. So http.handle.func, we're going to want to map our root endpoint to our homepage function. And finally, we're going to want to do log.fatal, http.listen, and serve. We're going to want to run this on port 9001, passing in nil as our second parameter there. And finally, within our main function, we no longer need this as it's been done within our home page function. So we can take this out and simply kick off our REST API like so. And as long as you spell it right, it should work. Now let's test that everything's up and running by typing go run main.go. And if I come into my browser at refresh, I should see that a valid JSON web token has been returned in the response body, which is exactly what we want at this stage. Perfect. So 
We've got a really simple client up and running that basically generates a token and doesn't really do much with it yet, but that's because it's not really got much to interact with. So let's change that now by creating a new server project. So come out of client, make their server and go into server and type in go mod in it github.com slash Elliot Forbes slash go JWT token slash server. Now again within this we're going to want to create another main.go file and again up at the top package main funk main and fmt.println my simple server. Save that. So let's cover really quickly what we expect this server to do. So I'm going to want to set up a simple home page function yet again. It's going to take in a response writer and a pointer to a HTTP request. And this is simply going to return fmt.f print f. And we're going to call this super secret information just for a bit of fun. Now below this again, we're going to want to create the handle requests function. And this will take in handle func forward slash and home page. Very similar to how we've done in the client. And just below this, we want to log.fatal http.listen and serve. And we're going to do this on port 9000 as opposed to 9001. Finally, within our main function, we want to call this handle requests function. Perfect. And just to check everything works, go run main.go. And if we come into localhost 9000, should see super secret information is returned. Perfect. So obviously everybody seeing our super secret information is not what we want. We want to be able to protect our homepage endpoint so that only people with valid uh, JWT uh, tokens or JSON web tokens, I should say, are able to see this super secret information. Now, an easy way to do this without having to modify our homepage function is to create a, an is authorized middleware function. So func is authorized. This will take in an endpoint or a function which will have the signature response writer and pointer to the http.request and I'm going to want this to return a http.handler like so. Now I can then go in here, take off func and simply change this to is authorized. And what this will do is every time somebody goes to try and call homepage, it will then first pass through the is authorized middleware. And at this point, it'll do nothing, but we'll extend this to basically do any pre-checks to make sure that any of the headers that we want set are set and that the values within those HTTP headers are valid JSON web tokens. So let's have a look at how we can do that now. So. In this, I'm going to want to return a http.handlerfunc. Let's read function w http.responsewriter and r, which is a pointer to the request. And within this, we want to then do our validation. So if r.header, so if the request has a header of value or key token then we want to come in here and we want to do some validation on that token. If it doesn't have this token header set, then we want to do fmt.f, printf, w, and not authorized. So we don't necessarily want to say that the header isn't set or the token isn't set, as that would give away slightly too much information. We just want to give a really simple not authorized method back to whoever's consuming our API. So if we control C our server, try run that again and come into here, we should see that we get the not authorized method passed or message passed back to us when we try and call that localhost 9000 now, which is kind of what we want. But when we do have the token header set, 
then obviously nothing happens. We should see nothing getting returned. So let's try and fix that now. So the first thing we're going to want to do is to parse this token header. So token or air equals JWD to parse. And again, we're going to pass in this header of token. And this actually passes back an array. So we want to take the first index of that array. And then we want to define the function that will parse that. So token, JWT dot token. And this is going to return an interface or an error. Now within this, we want to check if the token is valid. So if underscore, okay, token dot method. And we want to use the JWT dot signing method HMAC, which is the same one we used within our client. We want to check if this is not okay, then return nil and FMT dot error if there was an error. So finally, we want to return return my signing key, signing key or nil. Now below this, if everything has gone perfectly, then we can first of all check to see if error does not equal nil, fmt dot f print f w error dot error. But below this, we can then do if token if the token that we've returned from this parsing is valid, then we can do endpoint wr. So. Again, we're going to want to define this signing key up at the top here. So var my signing key equals byte. And we're going to want to use the exact same phrase that we had in our client. So my super secret phrase, pass this in here, save that. And everything should be perfect and ready to go. So let's just cover exactly what this does. So is authorized takes in a request and validates to see whether the token header is set. If it isn't, it prints out not authorized. If it is, it then tries to parse the token using the HMAC encryption algorithm and our signing key, which is defined up here. If that is all parsed correctly, we get this token. Um, and we can then check to see if the token is valid. If it is, we can then serve the original endpoint which was passed into our is authorized function here. So as you can see here, is authorized homepage. So is authorized would then call our homepage function passing in the response writer and the re original request. So we've not actually had to change any of the code within our homepage function. All of the validation and authorization code is done within this is authorized middleware function. Perfect. So let's control C our running server and kick it off again. And if we come back in here, again, we're seeing not authorized, but if we open up a Postman client, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up localhost 9001, which we're gonna have to restart very quickly. So CD client. Go run main.go, hit 9001 and grab this JWT. Within our REST client, we can then try and set our token header equal to the value of this JWT and send it. And as you can see, when we pass in with a valid token, which was just generated on our client, it then allows us to see this super secret information, which is pretty awesome. Okay, so the final thing we want to do within this tutorial is we're going to want to try and update our client so that it hits our server with a valid token. So if we come into our homepage function here, we're going to want to create a new HTTP client. So HTTP.client, create a new request. And we're going to ignore errors for now because I'm feeling a wee bit lazy. It is a Saturday morning. And this is going to be a type get request. And we're going to want to hit HTTP localhost 9000. 
which is the address of our server. And final parameter should be nil here. Oops. Now below this, we want to set our header. So request.header.set. And this will be our token header. And we want to take this valid token that we've generated up here, pass this into our header. And then we can do response or error equals client dot do a request. And let's do a wee bit of error handling here. So if error does not equal nil, fmt dot f print f w and error and string error dot error like so. However, if everything has gone to plan, then we can do body or error equals iOutil dot read all response dot body. If error is again not equal to nil, then fmt dot f print f w and error dot error. Again, feeling a little bit lazy. And finally, we want to pass in the response body. So it's string body like so. So what this does is it creates a new new request of type get, which will hit localhost 9000. It will append our valid JSON web token that we've just generated up here to our that request and then attempt to hit our server. As this is now a valid token signed by the same super secret passphrase as we've seen here, it should be a valid token and our homepage or our super secret information should be returned to our client. So let's see that working in practice. Come into your browser and hit the URL of our client. And let's try kicking it off again once more. Yep, there we go. We can now see that our client is able to generate the web token, hit our server with a valid web token and return that super secret information to the client, which is exactly what we want. So that's all we're going to cover in this fairly lengthy tutorial. We've managed to successfully secure our REST API using a valid JSON web token. Now, if you enjoyed this tutorial, then please let me know in the comment section down below. Leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more programming-based content. Cheers.